It's time for Game On Hockey with Travis Dunn and Scott Taylor. Near side, Reese Gaber shoots, scores! Talking all things from the blue line to the red line. A breakaway for Kaprizov. He's in. He shoots, he scores! And beyond. Sure, old-time hockey. Like it is sure. Yeah. yeah. Now here are your hosts, Travis Dunn and Scott Taylor. Eddie, I was looking at your stats again, and, and I've looked at, at them a lot over the years. Did you not get an offer in your final year? You played 58 games in the National Hockey League in your last season in the NHL. I don't think any goaltender has ever done that and not just like had a night for himself in retirement. I mean, (laughs) you look like you were ready to play some more. Oh, yeah. Um, I felt great the second half of the year. I was recovering from back surgery. Um, I had my second back surgery. So I think that you know, showed that I had the, the durability to continue playing. Um, you know, I wanted to keep playing and I think I played 28 games in a row the second half of the season. And I hadn't done that since I think I was a rookie and that's pretty hard to do, even if you're a, a, you know, a a young guy in the league, but, uh, I had great trainers uh, that helped me with my back and, you know, really got me back up to playing to the way I can play. And, um, I wanted to keep playing, but, uh, you know, you get to a certain age and I think, you know, sometimes players are written off maybe a little too early. So um, it was kind of a sad ending. I really thought I had more in me and and could play another four or five years, but uh, it just wasn't in the cards. The one thing I noticed that is when I'm looking at statistics and and you were to say the word horse is just really not the right word for it. You were, you were a camel. You just played and played 61 games, 61, 62, 63. From a stamina perspective, how hard is that in the National Hockey League, including the travel with all that? Yeah, it's it's very difficult. Um, put it this way, you have to learn how to sleep everywhere you go when you get a chance. So uh, you get on the bus, you know, you fall asleep. You get on the airplane, you fall asleep. I mean, you, we take naps, or I was taking naps when, whenever I could. You know, you have to stay on top of uh, your nap schedule for sure. And, uh, you know, your nutrition has to be really, you know, up there on par. And, and um, you know, you have to take advantage of, of everything, you know, that you can to get that rest. So you're, you're fresh playing that many games come playoffs. And, you know, I really had to learn, you know, to, to do that when I was younger. Because come playoffs, you know, you're, you're playing so many games in a short, you know, time period. And, you know, you can play, you know, four rounds of hockey uh, like we did in 92. We went to the finals against Pittsburgh and, you know, you just, uh, I was pretty young then. I, you know, I learned, uh, you know, I, I got pretty tired and the wheels came off in the finals, unfortunately. We lost four straight to Pittsburgh, but we had a great run. I learned a lot from it. I think it really helped me uh, win the cup in 99 with the Dallas Stars. I think the last time you and I had a long conversation, might've been in 2002 in Salt Lake City. And that was an experience for everybody in Salt Lake because you were the number three goaltender. And there are a lot of guys who wouldn't do that job on an Olympic team. Tell me the story of how you um, made the decision that you would be the third goaltender for Team Canada. Well, first off, it was a dream come true, you know, being chosen to play for Canada and, and being on Team Canada with, you know, that group of guys, uh, it's an amazing moment when you hear your name, you know, selected. And for me, I didn't care what role it was. You know, I just wanted to be on that team and help us, you know, try to win a gold and, and a dream come true uh, happened for all of us winning that gold medal. And, uh, it, you know, if I had the opportunity to play, I would have went in there and, and give it my all and, and tried to help us win a gold. And, and it wasn't meant to be at that moment. Uh, my role changed. And, you know, I worked hard in practice to try and, you know, be ready and, and give the guys, you know, someone tough to shoot on in practice and, and get the, the forwards, you know, all tuned up so that we could go out there and, you know, being on the bench and, you know, cheering the guys on. That's that's what you do. You know, that's what it takes to to be a championship team is, you know, there's guys that, you know, want to play more and, and you know, be a, a bigger role on teams. That's that's the case in every team that I've been on. And it takes sacrifice from, from players that know they can play uh, and, you know, they're not getting the chance to play, but, you know, they suck it up and they cheer their teammates on 
And, uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be on so many of those great teams, you know, starting with the, the 86, 87 fighting Sioux team that, you know, we went 40 wins, eight losses and uh, so many other teams like that too, that I've been on and guys make sacrifices for the better of the team. That's a, that's the voice, the familiar voice of Ed Belfour. You're listening to Game On Hockey on KFGO, as well as 104.7 FM and on YouTube Live. So if you tune in the YouTube Live, you will see Ed. He'll have, he has his Fighting Sioux hat on. He has his Belfour Spirits shirt, and he has a poppy, which is very, very appropriate for this particular day. And with our good friend Scott Taylor, uh, great catching up with Eddie. Eddie, you know, you talk about, you know, back to 86, 87. I just want to ask this question. What, what inspired you? to attempt to try out for University of North Dakota back in those days? Well, I grew up in Carmen, Manitoba, just a couple hours away across the border in Canada. And, um, you know, just being so close to the Fighting Sioux program, I just always wanted to be a Fighting Sioux. That was my goal and my dream, you know, growing up in Carmen, playing for the Carmen Cougars high school team, and then, you know, playing for the Winkler Flyers and the MJHL, uh, you know, we, we would, you know, always be told, yeah, you know, John Marks is in the building scouting tonight or, you know, Gino Gasparini's here to watch. And I mean, for Gino to come out and watch, that was a big deal. You know, it was always John, uh, Kerry Eads and Dean Blaze would come first. And, you know, if Gino was in the building, that means, you know, that was really special. And, uh, you know, it didn't happen very often. So, you know, when Gino came to watch us play in soccer, you know, I knew he was coming to watch, you know, myself play. And, you know, I wanted to make sure I put on a show and do the best I could. And, um, you know, I look back and those are the types of moments that, you know, I've always risen to the occasion. And, um, you know, I had the opportunity after that to, you know, come to North Dakota. And, you know, of course, I was coming down in the summers for the summer school camps. And, you know, at nights, uh, the guys would scrimmage and stuff. Um, highly illegal, I think. Uh, but I got on the ice a few times with the fellas. And I mean, what a dream come true for a young kid from Carmen, Manitoba to get to get out on the ice, you know, with, with the guys that were there, you know, running the camps and, you know, they were the pro players and I was out there stoning them. And I think that was pretty helpful for me. <laughs> I heard some of those were pretty epic games. You know, Doug Smale, Phil Sykes, Troy Murray, you know, sadly going through a real tough time. We wish him the best with his fight, uh, with his diagnosis. Uh, this a number of guys out there, talk about a competitive group. There, there was probably some blood and guts spilled during some of those games, I anticipate. Yeah, there was. It was competitive, and Blazer was out there playing too, of course, and chopping guys right and left. <laughs> and, of course, Blazer was the one keeping score. So, you know, he, he didn't miss anything, you know. And, and so the game became very, very competitive. It was fun your greatest memories of playing at UND? I think, uh, you know, those nights for sure. Uh, my recruiting trip when Bradbury and Sue took me out, um, you know, it's just an unbelievable weekend. I got to watch Colorado College, that atmosphere of, you know, the fans and the band and, and you know, the, the excitement just was just through the roof. And, you know, I wanted to be part of that so badly and I'd do anything for it and just train, you know, my ass off in the summer to get ready to come to camp and then, you know, getting the chance to get on the ice with the guys. And, you know, we had an awesome freshman group and, you know, Murray Barron and I were, were uh, roommates and you had uh, Russ Perrant and, and uh, Bobber were roommates. Uh, you know, it was just a... Uh, um, awesome going through training camp uh, you know of course we had blazer you know pushing us and you know tony hercus and i were really good runners and uh, i think i remember the the track coach wanted herc and i to come out for the track team too so it was a very competitive group of guys and and of course you know with gino and john marks and kerry eads and dean blaze pushing us every day you know it was a competitive competitive atmosphere every day for our group and uh like I said, it led to 40 wins and eight losses. And, you know, that first game, that first road trip, you know, there's a, a cork board there and the lineup who's going on the trip. And I just remember all the guys running up to that board and like trying to find your name on the board if you're going with the team. And I just remember that moment um, seeing my name and just amazing, you know. 
And you can tell oh, by the emotion in your voice. I've been there. I've done that. I remember walking to the Winter Sports Center to see if my name was on the cut list and shaking as I walked up to that door because you just never knew. We're, we're talking right. to Ed Belfort. This is Game on Hockey with Scott Taylor and Travis Dunn on 790 KFJ on 104.7 FM as well as on YouTube Live. Ed, you know, you look at the championships teams that you've been part of. UND, National Hockey League, Stanley Cups. This is not a fair question to ask, but I'll ask it anyway. Which one's your favorite? Uh, it's a, it's a t- you, it's, it, just what, which one do you hold dearest to your heart? I mean, that's easy because of one reason. It's the 86-87 championship team because it's, it's um, a family. And, like, we're on a thread together that you know we we speak every couple of weeks and there's 20 guys on the thread and you know we communicate with each other and and it just we've never lost touch with one another now of course you know winning the Stanley Cup is something I wanted to do since I was five years old and first started watching you know the original six teams that we watched back then and the Chicago Blackhawks being my favorite team and for me signing with the Blackhawks was also amazing but you know the closeness and the camaraderie and, and the family, the Sioux family, it's never, never, ever left. It's always been there. Um, you know, the guys always come back to Grand Forks and it's like, we haven't missed a beat when we see each other. It's so, so fun to be around the guys. And we were just in Nashville and it was so great to see some of the guys that were there um, for the Sioux, um, you know, game there uh, against the Penn state. And, um, you know, we just, just amazing you know Gino was there uh John was there Dean was there Carrie was there I mean it was just like you know amazing emotions and and we were hugging you know just had a great weekend but uh you know it's just something that for me that Sioux family that Sioux team um you know you have it for the rest of your life well there's something else you have for the rest of your life and speaking of emotional times, uh, 2011, you were inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. How does a kid from Carmen, Manitoba um, feel about getting inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame with the greatest players who ever lived? Um, and what kind of emotions went through you that day? Well, to be honest, um, when I got the call, I didn't expect it at all. And I didn't realize... <laughs> what a uh, epic moment and, and, you know, what a weekend that really is. And, you know, I, I was part of um, so many great teams and, and so many moments uh, where I was there the day um, my heroes, Tony Esposito, uh, Glenn Hall, uh, Bobby Hall and Stan Makita, they got their jerseys, you know, put up in the rafters in Chicago stadium. I was on the bench and um, gee whiz. I mean, those were my heroes and I, I got to, to witness that. And that's kind of what I always, you know, really had dreamed of happening and, and being part of was, you know, having your Jersey. There's nothing better than seeing that moment. I was in tears on the bench and um, you know, so I didn't realize, you know, and for me, um, I, I never followed, the, the Hall of Fame events, never watched them. So I didn't know anything about it. So when I got there, you know, after getting the call, it was amazing. Didn't expect it. You know, we, you know, flew into Toronto and I didn't realize what a huge, you know, event and what a huge honor that is. And I was totally unprepared. <laughs> and uh, uh, like I said, very overwhelmed, but oh my gosh, what, a, what an honor to, to be there you know, with some of my heroes and, and get it, get to rub elbows with them and, and hear the stories and, you know, you know, being around Gordy Howe uh, before he passed and Ted Lindsay, um, you know, sharing beers with those guys. Uh, what an amazing, what an amazing time. You know, Ed, I wish we should have done the whole hour with you, my friend. I didn't realize you'd be able to join us for, can you come back and do this again? We were running out of, two, we have a tight schedule, you know, and it was just, it's so great to have you on board with us, but I do have to ask this, obviously Belfort Spirits is where your next passion is. 
you know, and, and yeah. give us a background, a little background on that, and then and all the good things going on with Belfour Spirits uh, moving forward as well. Yeah, so I started Belfour Spirits with my son, Dane, and my daughter, Reagan, about eight years ago. Uh, we've been on the shelves with our bourbon and our rye whiskey for two years now. And um, uh, we went to school to learn how to make all the, uh, the different types of spirits, but uh, we only make bourbon and rye whiskey right now. We're in the process of building our own distillery here in Texas. Uh, we're excited about that opportunity. Um, like I said, we we went to school to learn how to make it. We we learned about every detail uh, of this business. I just didn't want to be another one of those celebrities that slapped my name on a product and didn't know anything about it. Um, Dane did an internship at Woody Creek Distillery in Basalt, Colorado. He made our first 12 barrels, um, which uh, this, this beautiful bottle right here with the beautiful chalice wow. on top. Stanley Cup on top. So, it's very Gatsby-like. Uh, we wanted to do something after the 1920s uh, where uh, we have this beautiful photo of my grandparents from 1920. So we, we modeled the bottle and the packaging after the 20s, the Gatsby era, Art Deco. And uh, we also made, I gave one of these to each one of my teammates from the 99 Cup team, by the way, and all the coaches and staff. And then we designed this beautiful green and white bottle and if you can see it on top yes indeed right and gave you know the inspiration for this obviously was my teammates uh you know the fighting sioux fans and and the program and um you know we we had so much fun creating this and we didn't expect this but this uh the rye whiskey in here won a double gold at the san francisco spirits challenge award and um so proud of the Sioux, so proud of this uh, Sioux bottle. And um, it's been an exciting trip doing it with my kids. Um, you know, like I said, we're working on trying to get our distillery built here in Texas so that we can, like Dane says, you know, he, he wants to you know, connect generations. So we have a lot of fun with it. Uh, we do a lot of tastings. Uh, we got some new whiskeys coming out here in the near future with our small batch rye and uh, the small batch bourbon is on the shelves right now. Uh, we got an event coming up January 28th uh, in Grand Forks. Grand Forks. Uh, they had Belfort and I am so honored to, to be there and be part of that weekend. And um, I can't wait to get there to see, uh, you know, what's gonna happen. And we're gonna do some nice private tastings with uh, Belfort Spirits and have a lot of fun with it. You know, Ed, uh, would you promise, you know, you, you have a lot of people who wrangle you now. Would you promise to come back on with Scott and myself here before you come in January? Would you yeah, for you? sure. I'm, okay. I'm game for anything, that. guys. Ah, awesome. Hey, you know what, Ed, it's, it's great having you on board. Scott, final few words. Well, uh, Eddie Belfo is one of the four or five or six greatest Manitoba hockey players. And when you talk about goaltenders coming out of Manitoba, you have two names, Terry Sawchuk and Eddie Belfour. Um, that's the history of our province. Um, I, I, I'm just thrilled to death that you came on with us tonight, and I can't wait to have you back on again because I have a hundred more questions to ask. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Scott. Thanks so much, Travis. Really appreciate you guys having me, and you know I can't wait to, uh, like I said, get up there to Grand Forks and uh, have a lot of fun. You got it, Dave. And you can see the pictures of the bottles that it was holding up on YouTube Live or go back to YouTube after. Search Game On Travis Dunn. You can watch it and you can see everything live. Ed Belfour, thanks so much. Hockey Hall of Famer. That's something, boy, that's, that's an honor to have you on board, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Thanks, Eddie.